Right, today on Sunny Talk Spurs, the Tottenham fan base is in a bit of turmoil at the moment. There's so many opinions flying around about Ange Postacoglu, the end of the season and the future for the club. So who better to talk through this than a non-Tottenham fan, a Manchester United fan, which some people may question is a bit of a odd one because Manchester United are in a turmoil of their own. But Alice knows her stuff about Tottenham, does amazing videos about them. So go and check out her channels. The link will be in the description below. But Alice... What do you make of all this? But first of all, how are you? Um, I'm good, thank you very much. Uh, nice weather today in the UK, so that always makes me in a good mood. And I'm excited to be on the channel again, talking about Spurs, where you're at and everything. Yeah, that's what I mean. That Hopefully the weather will be positive vibes heading to North London, maybe Manchester as well, depending. We'll have a few questions about Man United at the end, I'm sure. But at the moment, I want to get your opinions on Tottenham's current state, because... Personally, I think we've had a quite a good season under Ange Postacoglu, a first, a good first season. But Newcastle, followed by a North London derby defeat, which was quite, you know, first half 3-0 down. I know we pulled it back and all that sort of stuff. What are you making of the current atmosphere around Tottenham and, you know, Ange Postacoglu? Is it one that, are you surprised with some of the things you've seen? Or are you a bit like you are going to get blips and bumps along the road? Um, I'd say the word is inconsistent, and I think that's what you have to expect, particularly first year of a rebuild, especially when it's not like he's taken over prime Barcelona. He's taken over Tottenham that didn't have a good season last year, that weren't playing good football. And the style of football you've been playing the last couple of years under Mourinho, Conte, uh, even Nuno, who was there for like two months or something, very different to what Ange wants to play. So I think there's going to be a lot of inconsistencies. There's definitely a few tactical mistakes that Ange will make and he'll have to learn to adapt. But I don't think Tottenham are as bad off as I think people think or some people react because I think you had such a good start to the season that it's made the expectations higher. So now when you're a bit inconsistent, people are like, ooh, ooh, ooh. and I think like Newcastle was a very bad result, but that sometimes happens, you know, Obviously, Ten Hag's doing bad this season, but last season we lost 4-0 to Brighton, a bit like you lost 4-0 to Newcastle or something. And then we ended up coming third and winning the Carabao Cup, which we felt was a good season at United. I mean, Pep Guardiola scraped his way into top four in his first season at Manchester City. Klopp on Arteta were, what, eighth in their first season or something like that. So you have to look at it and go, it's the first season. He's inheriting such a different squad. Yeah, I think he got some things tactically wrong recently. Set pieces. I think sometimes your midfield's very open, which leaves your defence exposed and he needs to solve that. But I think when it's your first season, if you think on paper, Tottenham getting fifth or fourth place, first season, you're on track. Your style of playing football is a bit better. It's just not consistent. It's next season where if he starts making the same mistakes, I feel like that's when you start to give him a bit more criticism. And, and that's what's funny. It's almost like you have these moments. And you mentioned City there. City had a 4 0. It always seems to be a 4 0. They had a 4 0 drubbing against Everton, I believe it was, at Goodison mm. Park in Pet's first season. Everyone was like, wait, can Pep Guardiola football work in the Premier League? And, you know, the people who said that have got to sort of look back and go, well, wasn't I wrong? And even at Andy's other clubs, I think like Celtic, he had a few moments where there were drubbings and there was shock results and people were questioning whether his football could translate up into the Scottish League. So it is sort of this, th there are going to be questions about, because it's easy to say, does Ange have a plan B when you've just seen one style of football? And I've had conversations with people on my channel about expectation change. And you've said that. We started off so well, but people's expectations went the other way. Then we got all the injuries, suspensions and stuff like that. And expectations can then move the other way. You know, maybe we were odds on top four. But as the season goes, you have to reevaluate. I think, you know, I look at Man United as a comparison, and I'll say that because you're a United fan. During the season, people have been looking at United and going, how are they pulling results out? But sometimes you needed those results to at least get somewhere in the Premier League. So it, it's an interesting debate to have. And like as I keep saying, I, I'm a big supporter of Ange, and I think he'll personally iron out some of these issues and one of the issues that is happening is a lot of the first team players have sort of dropped off as the season's gone on mainly like James Madison but Kulisevsky as well why do you reckon this has happened or do you think it, they started off so well performing really good numbers putting up really good numbers that is do you reckon next season they'll come good again they sort of need that restart and a refresh yeah, I think a lot of it is probably momentum being disrupted and I think the team itself not doing as well. And I think potentially like a fresh start is needed. I think Madison was 
player of the season for the first two months. And then he's honestly not been himself. Kulu's not looked his best. And I think part of it might be because you have, for the first, what, 10 or 12 games of the season when you're really good, you almost had sort of the same team playing every week and you had that consistency and you were fresh and obviously you weren't in Europe. And then when the injuries came, and I think I think a lot of it was momentum at Tottenham. And I think you need that summer, you need that rebuild. I think you need a couple more profiles to bolster the midfield, bolster the attack, improve the defence. That I think I'd assume that Madison, you know, next season, pre-season picks up where he's left off. We've seen it before where sort of players start the season really well and then they drop off towards the end. And I think as well, Andrew's style of football is very demanding. Um, I've been talking about this in regards to Manchester United lately, how sort of, you know, Man United sort of playing a negative style of football and then Ten Hag wants to play a more intense style of football, which we've not really seen, but he's been trying to do that. And I think with Tottenham, you were playing more of a negative style of football in the past. And Ange, the style of football Ange plays is more pressing, more intense, more running. And I think it's also players having to get used to that and the demands of Ange Ball, which I think is, again, one of the reasons you've had so many injuries. A lot of them have been muscular because of the ground you've covered. And I think, weirdly, even though you've not had the same amount of games as other teams, I do think there's that element of exhaustion injuries and momentum sort of being gone and that just mentally need to get to the end of the season I think a pre-season arrest and some investment and I think players like Madison I'd assume because how good he was at Leicester and how good he was at the beginning he should be fine and you say there about certain moments and things in the season and even I haven't got the stats to hand but I remember doing a video about it at the beginning of the season where it's about Tottenham are covering more ground than they did under Conte and previous managers. So they have got to sort of adapt to this new style of play. And even though they sort of picked up quite quickly in those first 10 games, there were moments where you think back to, we didn't even really have a full pre-season. Some of our games got rained off and we went to a country during monsoon season. And even during pre-season, we looked a bit lacklustre in games against Barcelona and West Ham. So the fact we started the season at a canter was quite surprising. And Ange Postacoglu typically doesn't start seasons off in this style. It does take him even longer. So the fact we were on the front foot like we were did come to a shock to the footballing world. I think it's because the way football fans, and it is more, I don't think it is Tottenham fans. It's more like Arsenal fans trying to wind us up. It was the fact that Ange was seen as like a bit of a media darling early on. And people were like, he can do no wrong. He's so funny. And now he's under a bit of pressure. They're like, he's a fraud. He can't do it at this level. So... It's just football in a nutshell in the modern world. But the big talking point when it comes to Tottenham and adapting is set pieces. We're as shocking as Man United when it comes to set pieces, I believe. But I want to get your opinion on it. What what have you made of the set pieces? Because I was reading something interesting, or I saw something interesting in a throwback on The Athletic about how at Celtic, he had the same sort of issue. First season, they were terrible at set pieces and corners. And then it halved the season after. So do you think it's a process of learning the Ange style? Or do, are you a similar opinion to me where I'm like, forget zonal marking, you need to go man for man? Yeah, I'm kind of with you, forget zonal marking, go man for man, because I've seen Tottenham defence set pieces this season. I even remember like Everton, a free kick right at the end, you dropped two points. Arsenal, the thing is like, weirdly Spurs almost did enough to actually get a result versus Arsenal it's like the mistakes they caused themselves through bad defending at set pieces as well and I think that is definitely costing you probably like 10 points a season just through shocking set piece defending and I think Vicario is definitely being targeted and that's something that he needs to maybe work on and I think to be fair sometimes you know, he is being pushed a bit and they're not really doing much about it. And I think sometimes he needs to be stronger. But when I do watch Spurs defend set pieces, it is a bit like watching Man United defend set pieces at the moment. It's it's, it's bad. And I think maybe like what he could do, maybe is Radu Dragerson and, and Richarlison would have been stronger defensively at set pieces. But I think it's one of those where it's something they've definitely got to work on in the summer. Maybe go back to man to man because what they're doing right now isn't working. And I know that obviously some of their best headers and set piece players weren't on the pitch, but they definitely need to improve. And also when it comes to this, I'd say the set piece is like a short term issue. If you had to clarify, like maybe one short term issue that needs to be fixed for Tottenham and then something maybe in the long term. Is there anything you could highlight just from watching us this season? Short term, yeah, set pieces, like you said. Uh, Long term, and I think you really need like a number six, like us. So I know that Basuma started well, but he's been a bit iffy. 
I think you've got, you know, Bergfall coming in. He'll probably need a year or two to adapt, but he's going to be very talented. You've got Madison, you've got Saar, you've got some players that are very good, sort of a little bit more in an eight role. I think to get the best out of them, you need a sort of a distru- like a, a six that can, you know, break up play, get the ball, move the ball quickly as well. I think for me, that's something because um, Romero and I think Van Der Ven have had a very good season and a very, very good strong pairing. And I've seen people on Twitter give them a slander because of the amount of goals Tottenham concede and saying, how can Tottenham's defence be this good if they've conceded this many goals? But individually, I think the defence has been good, but they've not had much protection from the midfield. So I think your long-term issue, weirdly, I definitely need some enforcement. You definitely need some enforcement attack, but I would say number six. And then, I mean, you raise a good point there about the defence. I think if people were naming team of the seasons, you'd probably mention, you might not necessarily put like a Pedro Poro in, but he'd be in the conversation for right back. Same with Destiny Adogi. But then people go, your defence hasn't been that good. But I think in transition, our midfield does get bypassed. And at the beginning of the season, I thought we've got such a strong midfield here. But at the moment, it seems like they're all individuals. Like they're all good. They can be good on their day, but they're not worth that unit style out so maybe we need to move on the likes of Hoybier skip and maybe look at some options it's hard to know what options though because Rodri's a, a class player but he'd be expensive not saying that like, we'd buy him but like that sort of caliber of player Declan yeah. Rice Bruno or Kai Said. exactly mm-hmm. I mean they I mean, we, we, million, we, though. we thought Tangi and Dombele was going to be that player but obviously did not happen you mentioned six there when it comes to the forward line with Spurs like firstly I think another issue is we're not pressing as well as we did at the beginning of the season. We seem to be just running up blind alleys. But when it comes to the forward line, would you get a winger or a striker for Spurs? I kind of think you need both. Um, Son is very good in, you know, he can play winger, he can play striker. I, I don't know if Werner will be made permanent. Like he's been all right, but I, I don't think Spurs fans are too bothered either way with what goes with him. I think you probably need a winger and a striker. Um, I think you have to be sort of smart business-wise because some of the wingers are going to be crazy expensive and some of the strikers would be crazy expensive. But if I was Tottenham this summer, I'd be looking for a winger, a striker, a six, and then maybe another body sort of in defence for sort of depth there, to be honest. I mean, I don't know if you saw it, but Santiago Jimenez of Feyenoord, along with his teammate who's, I can't remember, he's like a right-back and defensive option. I can't, I can't remember the name off the top of my head. He's got the really weird name that's really hard to pronounce. That That is probably it. They were both at the game, and that gave me some optimism that they could be coming to us. But they have also been linked with Arsenal, so there is an opportunity that they were there to watch them. So I don't know. I mean, Santiago Jimenez is one of my top targets for the summer because when it comes to strikers, it's like if you can get Tony for cheap, maybe. Isak would have been amazing, but... That's not going to happen. And then Solanke, is it a purple patch? I think strikers are a tricky one because even I look at United, and I keep bringing United in because obviously you're a United fan, but Rasmus Hoyland, I think you've got such a good player there. And people at the time maybe thought risky, but I think he will come good along with, you know, Garnacho if they're managed well. At the moment, I don't think they're being managed too well, but we'll get onto that in the United chat. I'm sure of that. Back to Tottenham now. When... You see how our fixtures are going to be towards the end of the season. Still got to play Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, and then Burnley and Sheffield United. Where do you see us ending up? And where where we end up, whether that be Champions League or Europa League, do you actually think Europa League could be better? Um, I think Europa League, you've got more chance of winning it. And obviously, I'd assume Man United and Chelsea and Newcastle would be better next season, so there'll be more competition for top four. So I guess if you're in the Europa League and you win it, then you get back in the Champions League as well. Um, I think, like, for Tottenham, you know, you want to be in the Champions League no matter what. Like, that is what you want to be, and that will help you get more money for the summer and attract the best players. So I think it's going to be difficult. It's going to be between you and Villa. I think Liverpool you can probably beat because they've just given up this season. Um, I think, you know, Man City, you are a bit of a bogey team for them. And then the other fixtures, you should be all right. It really depends, to be honest, how many points Villa drop. But I think Champions League for the budget and the transfer window is probably what you want. Um, but I don't think Europa League's awful if you if you do end up in Europa League, because I've always said it with Man United this season. If we're in the Europa League, we've got a chance of winning it. We're not realistically going to win the Champions League. You can rest sometimes players in the group stage as well. And give youth a little bit of a chance and that it's always a gateway into the Champions League. Yeah, I agree 100%. I think you say financially, but I don't know whether that's going to actually change our targets. I feel like 
we probably identified targets already. So will that extra money from the Champions League be more going into Levy's pocket or will that be going into Ange's war chest? And you say, yeah, the Europa League, Tottenham, Tottenham aren't going to win the Champions League. We're just going to be making up the numbers unless we go on a crazy run like we did under Pochettino. But the Europa League, the fact the format's changing and the teams don't drop in anymore, which I've always hated, so I'm glad that's now changing. I think that gives us a chance. And, you know, unlike Arsenal, and I will get a little uh, quip in here, we've won that competition twice and they've never won a European trophy. So maybe it gives us good stead to try and retain it. Now, you've given your predictions for the end of the season. If all goes to plan and Tottenham do maybe get the signings that they are eager to get, how do you maybe see their second season going? I know it's a bit like crystal ball territory of predicting here, but do you think they could disturb the top four? As in like, you know, with Klopp getting on a slot, with, you know, Guardiola's um, Man City looking a bit, you know, iffy this season, even though they're still looking all right. And then Arsenal looking like they're still a force. Do you reckon Tottenham could disturb that, um, the order that's going on? Um, I think probably you could definitely get top four next season with the with the right window, the right recruitment. I think, I think Ange as well, you know, I know he's got a bit of criticism lately, but we know what he's capable of from sort of the early days. I don't, I still think the top two will be City and Liverpool, unfortunately, next season. Um, I think they'll be the top two, and I think not Arsenal. Liverpool... Sorry, City and Arsenal. Sorry, City oh. and Arsenal. I meant I meant Arsenal. <laughs> I meant Arsenal, not Liverpool. Uh, with City and Arsenal next season, I think they'll be the top two. I think Liverpool will have to adjust on the slot a little bit, and then I think Man U, Newcastle, Chelsea, Villa, very like sort of in that category with Tottenham. But Tottenham have been better than three of those four teams this season. I think with the right recruitment, Tottenham could really push third. I can see Tottenham being one of those teams next season where this season you might get top four on the final day, but next season you have top four with like three or four games to go and you progress. I don't quite see you competing with City and Arsenal, but again, that depends on the transfer window. If City get hit with one of these 115 charges, points deduction, things can change there. It's so hard to predict, but I definitely can see you being like comfortable top four. You're sort of going for top four this season. Next season's comfortable top four. The third season's where you want to push the title. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And now to round up, I want to do a nice segment on Manchester United because we can't get you on without talking about them unless you don't want to, but we are. Uh, so Man United's season has been underwhelming, you could say, but they're in an FA Cup final. So, so if and uh, Eric Ten Hag wins it, does that save his season? Um, I think, to be fair, if he's won two trophies in two seasons, that is pretty much better than anything close to Alex Ferguson, bar Jose. Um, I think it's Eric Ten Hag's season and his job, I really think, depends on the managers available. Because De Zerbi and Brighton, I'm not completely sold on De Zerbi. I think he would need a job between Man United and Brighton. Potter, I think, is better than what he showed at Chelsea. But I think Potter needs another job to get confidence back before you'd even think about for United. Don't rate Southgate. Tuchel, I actually do like. Um, but there's a few, you know, things of Tuchel and youth, Tuchel and getting on with the board that I think if Eric Tenag wins the FO Cup, I think there definitely would be a feel-good factor around Tenag. And if he did stay, I think there wouldn't be too many grunts and moans. But like Louis van Gaal, he won the FA Cup, he still went. I almost feel like Ineos' decision has been made. I feel like he's probably going to go. I'm very much of the stance with Tenag of, all, now all of a sudden we've got Ineos in control. They're bringing in Omar Brada, who worked at Man City, Jason Wilcox, that worked at Man City, and Dan Ashworth, who's Newcastle Brighton, all of that. They're making the decision on Tenog's future, and they are the footballing experts. So whatever decision they make, I'm just going to back. Whether it's Tenog staying or Tenog going, I'm sort of happy either way. I think because the football's been so bad and we've almost weirdly overachieved, like if we finish sixth, it's because of individual brilliant moments. Like generally... Newcastle and Chelsea have had more good games of football than us this season. Um, and I think the football has been atrocious. Um, but I'm very much like Ineos are going to make the decision. Maybe the FA Cup saves them, but I think it's down to the manager candidates available. I think the problem is you're Manchester United. So everything you do on and off the pitch is under the microscope, whether that be, you know, 
decisions from the Glazers, Ratcliffe, undercooked chicken in the in the restaurants, Ten Hag decision making and Ganacho tweeting and liking Goldbridge tweets, whatever it is. But yeah, it's a strange one because there are moments where it's like Chelsea are only a couple of points off you, but then it's like you'll then pull out a victory from the chores of defeat like Coventry and Liverpool. So you know I had a, a weird team. And even I saw a good video about their tactics. I think it was on either TFO or the Athletic about like Ten Hag actually has tactics. It's just it's not being implemented well. Like actually has Anana had a bad season as many people have said? I'm not it's sure yet. Right. I think he's been okay. So that's where it's quite confusing. So my final question, and it is now this one is about like Ten Hag and Postacoglu. When you compare both their first seasons, and then maybe you can use what ha- has happened to Ten Hag this season, how do you really compare them? Because it's almost like, and this these conversations keep coming up in my comment section about the managers in their first season, so like Klopp, Guardiola, and Arteta. But what they all had in common, including Ten Hag, was they either won something or got to a final. Klopp got to the Europa League final and the Carabao. Obviously, Arteta won the FA Cup. Guardiola finished third, uh, and then Ten Hag won the Carabao Cup as well. Whereas Ange, you know, both our cup exits were limp, to say the least. So do you? how do you sort of compare all those seasons? And do you think, has Ange Postecoglou done better than them in the league? Because a lot of them finished eighth, didn't they? So mainly Eric Ten Hag and Postecoglou, how do you compare them? But how do you compare all those managers in general? It's quite a heavy question. Yeah, I think all, all in all, like no managers first season, they kind of, come in and done something ridiculous in the league you know Pep I think got top four on goal difference because Man United under Van Howe lost like a game against the relegation side that we should have won or something like we gifted Man City top four that season I remember being raging about it like Klopp I think you know didn't you know have the best first season at Liverpool Arteta finished eighth he did get into a cup final but you know he got I think he finished eighth twice or something um I think you know Getting top four or or even top five, to be honest, when you think of where everyone predicted Tottenham and losing Harry Kane, I think a lot of people forget that, like, while Tottenham have been good, like, they lost Harry Kane, who's, for me, the best striker in the world. Um, I, I think he's better than Haaland, to be honest, just all round. Like, I think that was a massive, massive loss. I think that, I think in the league, yeah, I think Ange just had a successful first season. I think, I, I'd probably say he's up there. Like, I think Ten Hag, Weirdly, because Man United came, I think, seventh under Ragnick and was just awful, that on awful when he won a trophy and got third. That I'd say that maybe Ten Hag's first season is a little bit better than Andrew's first season because of the trophy. But I also think that Ten Hag had a lot more money to spend and probably had a better squad to work with than Ange. And I think when you look at the Tottenham squad where they've been the last couple of seasons, sort of since Pochettino's left, um, Tottenham don't make finals really and win trophies. It seems a bit of a curse of you. I, I think that Ange in the league has done very well. And I think compared to other managers, the way I describe Ange is more than on track, more than deserves a good back in this summer. And next season is when you can be a bit more critical of him. But as a whole, I think this season, he's where you'd expect him to be. Slightly above, really, actually, where I'd, I'd expect Tottenham to be. So you don't think he's really been found out, as some fans and rivals have said? I don't think he's been found out. I just think that he doesn't have the personnel to do what he wants to do. And I think like he just needs the recruitment to do that because, as I said, the midfield is a bit open. You are a bit caught out in transition. He, I think he needs that midfielder. I think he needs a bit more legs. I think he needs sort of another sort of direct winger. I think I think he just needs a couple of players. And, and I've been, like, even with Ten Hag this season, as you said, Ten Hag has tactics, but Casemiro and Eriksen can't, can barely run compared to other midfielders. And I think, you know, Ange has got problems with injuries and certain players gone. And I think if if it's not working next season and people stay fit and you've got the right recruitment in the right players, that's when you question it. But we know what Ange can do. And I think he just is losing the players for that a little bit. No, I agree. My final point will be, some people will say, well, why weren't Conte and Mourinho back like this? And I, I don't know what your opinion is, but I still think that those managers were short-term solutions that didn't work and they necessarily weren't going to stay at the club long-term. So what was the point of giving Mourinho a, or Conte a bastoni or Mourinho the player he wanted when he wasn't going to stay? Whereas you're going to give Postacoglu a van der Ven because he is going to stay. He signed a longer-term contract and he wants to implement a style. Hence why we've seen Scott Mumble into the club. We've seen Fabio Paratici still in his advisory role. We've seen Johan Lang brought in as a scout and our, I think three of our scouts were sacked. So we are changing our approach. I just think 
it's it's just it is got it's got to be a waiting game and patience. You know, I, I keep saying these stereotypical phrases like Rome wasn't built in a day and all that sort of thing, but we've seen it, and I think people are it's similar at United and it's similar at Chelsea. People are used to oh well, you you, you them clubs more used to overnight success and winning stuff. Whereas I feel like Tottenham aren't, so I feel like we should even be more patient. We've had twenty four years of like Levy one trophy, so. I don't know. But anyway, I want to say a massive thank you, Alice, for jumping on the channel. Before we go, do you want to plug anything on both of your channels? I know you work so hard pushing out not just Manchester United content, but other football clubs as well. So is there anything you want to push to? Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for having me on, Sonny. Uh, do make sure you like and subscribe to Sonny's channel, guys, if you have not already. And yeah, um, if you want a bit of Tottenham content, I haven't posted much on Tottenham in a while because there's not really been anything really that exciting going on and I felt you know I'll wait until they get a good result or there's some interesting transfer news there hasn't been much but Akila Football which is Alice spelt backwards E-C-I-L-A Football I do do content on all the sort of big seven clubs that aren't Manchester United and then if you do want Man United content live streams watch alongs head over to Alice Talks Football thank you very much Thank you. Honestly, I really like your videos. Your last Tottenham one was really good, but we were on a crest of a wave back then. So a lot has flipped as we've discussed in this video. But yeah, as Alice said, I, I appreciate the cheeky plug as well. Yeah, if you are new around here, leave a like, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and also you can become a member. Link in the description down below. But until the next video, I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.